Welcome back to our IB Chemistry video series. This is the second video in IB Chemistry Topic 4, Chemical Bonding and Structure, where we will be looking at valence shells, Lewis structures, the Vespa theory, and allotropes of carbon. Before watching this video, it is critical that you watch both our IB Chemistry Topic 2 video series and our previous Topic 4 video. As a reminder, the four main energy levels contain 2, 8, 18 and 32 electrons. A valence shell is the outermost energy level of an atom. If we take the example of phosphorus, it has 15 electrons, so it would have 2 electrons in the first energy level, 8 in the second, leaving 5 in the third energy level, its valence shell. Remember, the group number of an element is the same as the number of electrons in the valence shell. So phosphorus is found in group 5, i.e. 15. When discussing valence shells, an important rule arises, the octet rule. This is that all covalent compounds bond so that each outer atom has 8 valence electrons. The only exception to this is hydrogen, which only needs 2. For example, the valence electron distribution within CF4 looks like this, and CH4 looks like this. An extension to the octet rule is the expanded octet rule. This is that all covalent compounds with a central atom in period 3 or higher can bond so that the central atom will have more than 8 valence electrons. This makes sense, since period 3 is the third energy level, so it can have 18 electrons. Note, the outer atoms still obey the octet rule here. For example, the valence electron distribution within PF5 looks like this. For your exam, you cannot represent covalent structures like this. Instead, you need to be comfortable using what are known as Lewis structures. To draw a Lewis structure, there are five distinct steps. Let's go through them using PHCl2 as an example. First, add up the valence shell electrons for all the atoms in the compound, including any charge present and divide this number by 2 to find the number of electron pairs. Here, 5 for phosphorus, plus 1 for hydrogen, plus 2 times 7 for the chlorines, divided by 2, which gives 10. This is the number of lines we may use for our lowest structure. First, draw the central atom surrounded by the three outer atoms, evenly displaced. Here, draw 90 degrees apart from one another. Then, join each of the outer atoms to this central atom using one line representing one bond. Place three lines on the outer atoms to satisfy their octets. Remember, hydrogen can only have two electrons, which it has from its bond, so you do not need to place any lines. If present, place any remaining lines on the central atom. As a useful tip, a central atom in period two should have a maximum of four lines connected, whereas one in period three should have a maximum of nine. It is worth noting that you may have learnt a slight variation on drawing a Lewis structure. Electrons can also be represented using dots or crosses, including for lone pairs. However, for this video, we will continue to use lines. When dealing with a central atom in period 3 or greater, it is important to check if the outer atoms can form double bonds. If so, the final stage of a Lewis structure is to move lines from the outer atoms to the central atom to form such bonds. Let's use the example of SO4 2 minus. Adding up the valence electrons, we have 30, but since this is a 2 minus ion, we say the total is 32. Thus, we have 16 lines to use. Note a charge of 2 plus would cause you to remove 2 from your total. First, we connect sulfur to all four oxygens using one line and fill the octet of the outer oxygens. This leaves no further lines. However, Sulfur is in period 3, and so can have more than 4 lines connecting. In addition, oxygen can form double bonds. So, we move 2 lines from the outer oxygens to the sulfur, to create 2 double bonds. Don't forget to show the charge by surrounding the structure in square brackets, showing its charge. You may be wondering why we created only 2 double bonds, instead of 3 or 4. Well. A useful tip is that in a charged structure with an expanded octet, the charge signifies the number of single bonds, i.e. here, 
2 minus, so two single bonds. So, ClO4 minus would have just one single bond. You've now reached the end of the preview for this IB Science video. If you want to check out the full video, head over to our website and select a membership plan today.